Welcome, game developers, to another Firecast. Have you been staring longingly at Cloud Firestore for Firebase and waiting for that one perfect tutorial to help you integrate it into a Unity game? Well, welcome, friend. Let's get started. So, I'm a fan of tabletop RPGs, and I figured it would be fun to create an RPG character system in Unity and sync it to Firestore. Maybe this will be the basis for an awesome new Firebase adventure game or just a clever hack to avoid forgetting my character sheet again. But first, let's talk about why Firestore, other than this being some elaborate MacGuffin. It's not the only Firebase database in town, after all. Firestore is a NoSQL database that lets me view changes in near real time and is paired with a powerful query system. Firestore scales up to over a million concurrent users, so I'm not going to have to think about manually sharding or balancing my player base. This means that unless I decide to pivot to a real-time action RPG, I can iterate quickly as a prototype and have a good amount of certainty that my game will be shippable as is when I'm done. Not that I'd ever ship code I wrote whilst prototyping. It's great for that meta gameplay I might want to ship in my game as well. Maybe guild progress towards some shared goal, seasonal leaderboards, or even a backing for a battle pass when I consider monetization. Firestore is also robust and fast enough to be the core of any asynchronous multiplayer mechanics I might consider. I could build to a board game, card game, or even a multiplayer stat-based trivia game entirely on Firestore. And I'll be able to rest assured that with 99.999% uptime, my players will be able to play when and where they want. Firestore is one of two databases available to Firebase game developers. See this page for more information on choosing a database, link in the description below. Generally, you'll want to use real-time database for small amounts of rapidly changing data, whereas Firestore is great for lots of data that changes less frequently. But this decision could be a video into itself, and you can use both if you have different needs for different features. If you're like me, you're probably already a little bored and just want to jump to writing some C Sharp. But I need to talk a little bit about how Firestore stores and accesses data, since this will inform my code structure. Firestore is a schemaless NoSQL database. This may take a bit of adjustment if you're not used to it, but it will feel familiar to any existing real-time database or Mongo users. Firestore is different than real-time database though, so don't skip to the next chapter just yet. Firestore has two kinds of objects, collections and documents. Documents roughly map to a struct in C-sharp, so that's how I'll plan to use them. A collection is just a group of these documents. In this architecture, any single character sheet is a document, since they'll probably have a name, stats, and whatever other gameplay data I need to place there. To hold a bunch of these character sheets in my database, I'll put them in a collection called character sheets. The only other rules to keep in mind is that the root of the database has to be a collection, and the documents themselves can't contain other documents, but they can certainly have child collections that contain other documents. So if I wanted to add a player inventory, I could look at doing that by adding a inventory subcollection to each character document. This means that in general, I'll be zigzagging through my data with a collection, then a document, then a subcollection, then a document as far down as I need to go. Also note that subcollections don't actually live in documents as in there won't be a field in a character document called inventory. So you don't have to worry about what kind of C-sharp collection you add in Unity. Now it's time to fire up Unity and throw something together. As I said at the start, I'm building a character creation system as the first step towards some RPG project. I've already installed and set up Firebase after following this getting started tutorial, link in the description below. This means that I have my Google services configuration files in my game. I'm verifying that I have my dependencies. And in this case, I'm loading a scene after Firebase initializes. Next, I'll add Firestore to my Firebase project by opening my Firebase dashboard. I'll go here and click Create Database. 
I'm going to create this database in test mode, which sets the security rules so that it will block reads and writes entirely for 30 days. So a quick security timeout. Rules are of course very important. The Google services configuration files you downloaded in the getting started video are trivially retrievable by anyone you send your game to, even on the app stores. This means that just downloading your game would give someone enough information to read or write anything anywhere in your database if you were to leave it open. So the only way to really ensure that enterprising players aren't poking around where they don't belong is to define strict access rules, only allowing players to write their own data and only allowing them to read what's shared with them. Anything short of that is just asking for trouble in the future. To find out more about rules, see this video, link in the description below. With the test mode rules, your database will be fully open for 30 days to let you experiment before locking down, preventing any reads or writes. So you have some time to experiment, but don't waste it all and be a little cautious with whom you share your project with during this time. Back to the screencast. I'll also choose a location. There are different pros and cons to each one, but generally you want the one that's closest to your players. It's probably also better to choose a multi-region location like NOM5 if you want those five nines of uptime, which I'm doing. There are some other considerations. For example, choosing a multi-region location favors reliability over speed, but I'll include relevant links in the description below to help out. You only get one Firestore database per Firebase project, and I live in the US, so NOM5 is a good safe bet for me. So now, let me import the Firestore Unity package from my downloaded Firebase SDK. I'm using the version in the .NET 4 folder, which is the package you should use with any recent version of Unity. I'll start by defining the data that represents a character in a struct called character data. Remember how I mentioned that Firestore documents are basically structs? I literally mean that. I just have to tag this struct with the Firestore data attribute for this to work. You could theoretically use a mono behavior or just deal with the document as a C-sharp dictionary, but I find that this is the safest and easiest representation. Next, let me define what's in a player. These have to be properties rather than fields. That is, they need a getter and a setter. If it wasn't for this requirement, I might just choose to send a mono behavior to Firestore rather than mediating through a struct to make it easier to edit game data in the Unity editor itself. So I'll add a Firestore property annotation and create a string name with a get and a set. Also a string description for some cool backstory. No character is complete without a lengthy novella accompanying them. And finally, I figure that at some point, I'll have something like stats. A property for attack and defense seems like a good first step. I want to hook these up to the Unity UI, so I'll just create a set character data class. First, I'll have a serialized string for the character path, where this lives in Firestore. I'll put a document named One Cool Dude in the collection Character Sheets for now, but it will be configurable in the editor. Then I'll add an input field for each property in my player data. So name, description, attack, and defense. Oh, and a submit button. When you click on the button, I'll create a character data to upload. Grab the name, description, attack, and defense. Then upload it to Firestore at the character path I defined. Note that by default, this replaces the document with the data you pass into set async. You can pass an optional set options to merge the data or only merge specific fields. This doesn't make sense for my game right now, so I'll just delete it. Let me also build a UI real fast. Then I'll hook up name, description, attack, defense, and the submit button. After all that, I can click run and our name like Vizzini, a quick description like, have you heard of Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, amateurs? Some stats like attack 10 and defense zero and hit submit. 
Now, if I jump back over to my Firebase console, I might have to hit refresh real fast, but now I should see all of my data. This will also update in real time after that first refresh. So if I think defense is a little mean, I can up it to one or even two. There's of course a bit more to do here for a shipping game. I don't sanitize inputs at all, either locally or via security rules on my Firestore database. And I can only create one character right now, but that's a problem for post-production Patrick. Pre-production Patrick needs to write a quick character viewer to make sure that this data can get back into the game. So I'll create a class named get character data. I need the database path, so let me copy paste it from the set behavior. Then to make this video easier to follow, I'll create a bunch of text fields to write into. Normally I'd use Unity events to make this a little more pluggable. Next, I'll create a public function that can be called on a button press that I set up in the editor. I'll get the Firester document at my character path and ask for a snapshot asynchronously. It's very important that I continue this on the main thread since I'll be calling functions on Unity objects. Not doing this could result in some confusing threading exceptions. I'll just assert that there's no exception for now. You'll want to check this and act on it in the future. And finally, I'll grab the character data just by saying task.result.convert to character data. That's it for reading from the database. Let me just complete this bookkeeping task of updating all the text fields. I'll create a UI real fast, then add the text fields name, description, attack, defense, and hook them up. Let's hit go and see what happens. So you can see that I can get the last character data I uploaded, and I can also change it here and sync it down. But this isn't the best way to keep data in sync with Firestore. Get data by default makes a call out to the Firestore server. No matter how fast this connection is, the reality of network latency, the fact that players may lose internet connectivity between subway stops, in that 30 seconds after walking out the door when your phone can't decide whether it wants your Wi-Fi or the cell tower means that your game may never be perfectly in sync. Every time I've shipped an online feature, whether a real-time competitive multiplayer mode or asynchronous meta gameplay, I've had to build a large amount of potentially buggy latency compensation code to predict the effects of a player's action, update the game accordingly, then rectify my prediction if it turns out to be wrong. Listen is probably the best possible generic solution to this problem. Rather than waiting for a network request and returning data based on that outcome, it hits a local cache containing the last known state of the document. If the cache is up to date, the callback fires once and the listener sticks around in case the document's updated again. But if the cache is out of date, the player will get a second update seconds to minutes later, depending on the quality of their network connection. So you can give users some feedback immediately, but just remember that you need to gracefully update your game state again when it changes. But because of this, you get a bunch of other cool side effects. For example, if you write data to a document, you actually update the cache before you update the server data. And any listeners can get your local update immediately you could feasibly have an entire game play out offline during a subway ride and just sync the data up afterwards. Just remember that when it does sync and the transactions fail, you'll get another update undoing the gameplay that you'll also have to gracefully handle. Like I said, it's not a perfect solution, but probably still automating a ton of code that you'd be writing manually anyway. So let's see how this works. I'll create a start function, copy over my get snapshot line, and change this to listen. I'll also cache the listener registration. Then I'll create an on destroy callback before I forget and call stop on this listener registration. In Unity, this is very important if you want to avoid potential null reference exceptions. Now, I'll just copy the rest of the body of get data out and delete the old function. I don't need it anymore. I don't need the get button anymore, so I'll just delete that. Then click launch. Note that I already have the data. 
If I set new character info, it just syncs automatically. That should get you set up with the basics, but this is only the start. First and foremost, start thinking about security. Before you share your Google services data outside of your team, either by sending it to testers or making it open source, you'll want to create robust security rules. Next, I'd love to see y'all build on this framework. Maybe you can create a simple multiplayer deck battling game, or perhaps a multiplayer co-op RPG where you and some friends have to make cool characters to fight against some epic boss. You could even use this to create a game manager for your next tabletop RPG session. I may be doing that myself to slim down my binder full of character sheets. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you love these Firebase Games tutorials. Let me know what you're building or what you want to hear me talk about next in the comments below. And of course, follow me on Twitter at Puxor. So long and have a wonderful time.